Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm going to review the Ender 3 S1 Plus, which is a pump-up version of the Ender 3 S1. The print volume of the Ender 3 S1 is 220 by 220 by 270, and this Plus version is 300 by 300 by 300, which is two times larger. The features are 95% the same, including the new Creality Sprite Extruder, which is a lightweight dual gear direct extruder that weighs just around 210 grams. It has a dual Z axis with a timing belt, a CR Touch auto bed leveling sensor, a 32 bit board with silent stepper drivers, a spring steel print surface, X and Y axis belt tensioners, a filament sensor, full size SD card support, a drawer, cleaner cable management, better quality limit switches, and the same better overall appearance as the Ender 3 S1. Besides a larger print volume, as far as I can tell, there are six upgrades and differences in this Plus version. 1. The color screen with a knob has been upgraded to the same touchscreen as the Ender 3 S1 Pro. 2. Two extra screws are added at the back of the print bed to make aligning the spring steel sheet easier. 3. The leveling knobs have been upgraded from plastic to metal. 4. The extruder housing and spring tension lever have also been upgraded from plastic to metal. 5. Insulation was added at the bottom of the heated bed to improve energy efficiency. 6. The gantry is secured from the two sides instead of from the bottom. As the print quality of the Ender 3S1 is so good, I expect this Ender 3S1 Plus to also print pretty well, so let's see if this is the case. I would like to thank Pergear for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the base, the gantry, the screen, the screen mount, the extruder, the filament holder, the bed leveling knobs, some sample filament, and some tools. Let's start by attaching each of these four knobs onto their positions at each corner of the print bed. Once this is done, slide the extruder onto the gantry and secure it with five screws. Next, place the gantry on top of the base and secure it using two screws on either side. Then, fasten the screen mount to the side of the printer using three screws, connect the screen cable, and then slide the screen into place. Now, let's connect some cables, starting with the Z-stepper motor cable and the filament sensor cable. Connect the other Z-stepper motor cable, and then connect this ribbon cable to the extruder. Slide this cable holder into place and slip the ribbon cable into its slot to keep things more organized. Connect the X-stepper motor and the X-limit switch cable. After that, mount the filament holder on top of the gantry and connect the filament sensor cable. Remember to check the voltage as well, and as I am in the US, I will flip it to 115. Finally, plug in the power cord and turn on the printer. Remove the sticker and plastic protective surface from the screen and start Auto Home to make sure that everything is working. We will now preheat the printer so we can feed in filament, but be sure to move the extruder higher up so the nozzle does not burn the print bed. Click Preheat PLA, and I will then feed in filament until I can see some coming out of the nozzle. Insert the SD card, but before we can print, we still need to level the bed. Let the printer home first, and then adjust the Z offset using the paper test and these up and down arrows on the screen. Now, we can start manually leveling each of the corners. After we adjusted the four corners, the height of the bed is now different, so we have to check the Z offset again. Finally, let it do auto bed leveling. Let's go to Kira to set up this printer. Click Add Printer, Non-Network Printer, Creality 3D, and as this printer does not have a profile yet, just choose the Ender 3 Pro. We need to change the print volume to 300 by 300 by 300, and also add G29 in the G-code to do auto bed leveling before the print starts. 
Finally, change the retraction distance to 0.8 and the speed to 50 millimeters per second. Now, let's start our first test print, an XYZ calibration cube. This print will take 30 minutes. The result is pretty good. The text is clear, the layers look alright, and the dimensions are also accurate. Up next, we will print a 3D Benchy using Bamboo Lab Orange PLA. Slice it, and it will take 1 hour and 44 minutes to finish. The result is great. There isn't much stringing, the layers look pretty nice, and there weren't any cooling issues. Then, let's print this model of a bus with Overture Yellow PLA. The total print time is 15 hours and 34 minutes. The result is overall pretty amazing. The smaller details such as the words on the bus are printed very well. There is not too much stringing and the wheels can also spin freely. Afterwards, I will print a trash can using Overture White PETG that maxes out the print height of this printer at 300mm tall. As I don't need it to be super detailed, I will change the layer height to 0.3. As this is PETG, change the nozzle temperature to 235 degrees and the bed temperature to 85 degrees, and turn off cooling as well. This is meant to be a trash can, so make sure to enable vase mode by checking spiralized outer contour. Slice the model, and it will take 18 hours and 7 minutes. This print turned out fantastic. The entire model looks awesome from top to bottom, and the details look great on both the outside and the inside. Next, using Hatchbox Red ABS, I will print this model of a crate. Leave the layer height as is, but change the printing temperature to 245 degrees and 100 degrees. Leave the cooling as disabled. Slice it, and it will take 7 hours and 46 minutes to finish printing. The result is pretty impressive. There is no warping at all, and the print stuck very well to the bed, and there is also very little stringing. Following this, I will print a bottle opener with grey overture nylon filament. Don't change the layer height, but change the printing temperature to 255 degrees and 60 degrees. This print will take 55 minutes. However, the first attempt did not work, as the print did not stick well. I tried again using a smooth PEI print surface with some glue applied, and it finished without any issues. It turned out fairly nice, and the layers look pretty good, but it is time to see if it is actually functional. Much to my surprise, this bottle opener did work when I tried it. Then, using Overture Black TPU, I will print this card holder or wallet. Change the layer height to 0.2 and change the printing temperature to 235 degrees and 60 degrees. Slice it, and it will take 2 hours and 22 minutes. Instead of using a smooth PEI spring steel sheet, I can actually use the other side of the print surface that came with the printer, which is just plain steel, and apply some glue as well, since the print is actually sticking to that thin layer of glue. It sticks okay except for a tiny bit of warping at the corner. 
the result looks nice, and this card holder is definitely both functional and flexible. Finally, I will print a model of the Big Ben with Hatchbox Bronze PLA and set the Z height to 300mm to use the maximum printing height again. Change the nozzle temperature to 200 degrees and enable cooling. Slice the model, and this print will take 19 hours and 35 minutes to complete. Here is the result. The details were printed beautifully from the bottom to the clock to the tip of the building at the very top. Especially for a model this tall, this is an extremely stunning print. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. The assembly only takes 10 minutes. It's as easy as or even a bit easier than the Ender 3S1, as the gantry is secured from the side instead of the bottom. 2. The print quality is as good as the Ender 3S1. They both print great right out of the box. The new generation of Creality Sprite extruders work very well, and the retraction is also accurate. It can print PLA, PETG, ABS, TPU, and nylon filament with good results. 3. The new touchscreen is the same as the Ender 3S1 Pro. It came with a new screen UI that supports 9 different languages, but the menu structure is not that great, which I will talk more about in the cons section. 4. The gantry is stable. I don't have any issues when maxing it out to print these tall models that are 300mm in height. If you disable the M211 soft limit in the firmware, the Z axis can go even higher to 320mm. Five. The insulation added to the heated bed can save some energy. Using a smaller Ender 3 or Ender 3S1 to print a PLA 3D Benchy with a 200 degrees Celsius nozzle and 60 degrees Celsius heated bed will consume 204 watt hours. This larger print bed is definitely expected to consume more energy, but it consumes just 5% more energy at 214 watt hours. Now for the cons. 1. The touchscreen is the same as the Ender 3S1 Pro, so the menu structure is not as good as the Ender 3 V2 or Ender 3S1. It's still fully functional and has everything you need, but it is just a bit inconvenient. For example, the Z offset feature is put under the AUX leveling menu. It would be nicer to have three separate items under the leveling menu. Set Z offset, manually level corners, and auto bed leveling. Another example is that the nozzle and bed temperature are shown on the main screen, but they cannot be adjusted by pressing those numbers. You still have to go to Ready and the Manual tab to set them. The number pad for adjustment will only show up when you press them after the print is started. It would be better if it did the same thing on the main screen. 2. The firmware has some issues that needs to be addressed. For example, it can only read files on the root, so if you have many G-code files and want to organize them in different folders, you need to move those that you want to print to the root. Another issue is that when you go to the ready menu, it will home the printer automatically and the nozzle is touching the bed. When you select preheat nozzle right after that, it won't move the nozzle away from the print bed while heating, which increases the chance of a mark being left on the sticker sheet print surface. Three. It didn't come with a titanium heat brake, which cost just less than $10. For a printer at this price point, I would expect it to be able to print high temperature filament like nylon carbon fiber or polycarbonate with a 300 degrees Celsius nozzle. 4. The spring steel sheet is nice, but it would be better to use a double-sided PEI with both a textured and a smooth surface instead of this sticker print surface sheet. In conclusion, this printer is good for those who like the print quality of the Ender 3S1 and its convenient features, but who may also need a larger print volume. This Ender 3S1 Plus costs $130 more than an Ender 3S1. It has a larger print volume, a touch screen, more metal parts, as well as some other minor upgrades, which is not bad. However, instead of the touch screen upgrade, 
I would rather have a titanium heat break to be able to print at 300 degrees Celsius and the double-sided PI print surface. I can live with the Ender 3 S1 color screen with the knob. Personally, I liked that UI even more than the new touchscreen UI, as the menu structure was more reasonable and it also supported community firmware, which has many extra features. It seems like Creality wants to use this Ender 3S1 Plus to fill the gap between the Ender 3S1 and their $729 flagship model, the CR10 Smart Pro, which I will also review by the end of this month. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss my latest videos. That's it for this video. If you are interested in the Ender 3S1 Plus, I put the link under the video description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.